Thanks. All right, by a 5-4 vote, the Supreme Court said today the Trump administration's new transgender military policy can stay in place for now. The battle's not over as the case on the actual merits of the policy plays out in the lower courts. And as correspondent David Hunt uh, spot reports tonight, for the Pentagon, it's a simple question over something called battlefield lethality. In the moments following the announcement from the Supreme Court, opposition erupted. Quote, Americans who defend our right to live freely should be able to serve freely. DNC chair Tom Perez tweeted. Presidential candidate Kirsten Gillibrand tweeting, quote, Trump's hateful ban on transgender troops in our military is an affront to their service and has nothing to do with unit cohesion or readiness. But war is unforgiving, and the point of war is to win. It's that lethality that has made America the strongest military in the world. According to some military leaders, America's lethality became endangered when President Barack Obama's administration allowed transgender recruits. Does it make us more lethal? And uh, I clearly would argue that it doesn't make us more lethal. In an interview with Fox's Brett Baer in 2016, retired four-star Marine General John Kelly, who later became President Trump's chief of staff, argued accepting transgender recruits would cause more harm to the person receiving treatment and the military as a whole. There's a lot of ways to serve your country. The military is a very, very different organization in the sense of what it does. At the end of the day, it fights. Under Kelly and former Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis's watch, President Trump announced through a surprise tweet in 2017 that he would reverse the Obama administration policy welcoming transgender individuals to serve. Trump's policy generally restricts those individuals from serving unless they serve in their biological sex and do not suffer from gender dysphoria. They also cannot seek to undergo gender transition surgery. Those already serving under the Obama era rule are exempt. Important to note, Trump's own army chief of staff said last spring transgender members of the military pose no specific problem. I'm concerned about uh, that and want to make sure that they are in fact treated with dignity and respect. And no, I have received precisely zero reports okay. of uh, issues of cohesion, discipline, morale and all those sorts of things. Matt has sent a memo to President Trump highlighting some of the concerns about transgender members of the military. Now that Mattis is gone, it's likely acting Secretary Pat Shanahan will tackle this subject in the future if he's still leading the Pentagon. Shannon. David Spunt, thank you very much. Okay, on one side, there are claims the Pentagon's approach amounts to prejudice. On the other, it's about what David talked about, that battlefield lethality idea. So let's bring in two folks to talk about it, Fox News contributor Richard Fowler and retired gunnery sergeant, senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, Jesse Jane Duff. Great to have both of you with us tonight. Good Thanks to be here, Shannon. This. Okay, so let me read some of the reaction. Uh, not happy about this policy being upheld by the Supreme Court. And again, not on the merits, just that it's going to be allowed to play out while the case on the merits plays out. Uh, the American Psychological Association says this, their president, transgender people are currently serving in uniform with no adverse impact on military readiness or unit cohesion, and there is no research to the contrary. Jesse. Well, right now, the ban does not prevent the current people that are in place, mm -hmm. and it does have conditions for waivers. What is the biggest issue at stake was that transgenders were wanting to have surgery while on active duty and transition while on active duty. That put them in a non-deployable status. You cannot join the military if you're non-deployable. We have a multi Multiple, multiple thousands of medical issues that mm -hmm. prevent people from enlistment. And if you're going to allow one group to come in and have surgeries and go through transition, what about other groups? What about other groups with cancer? What about those with high blood pressure? What about those maybe with uh, flat feet? What about eczema? You're going to open the doors that if you allow one group to receive this special treatment, what about the other treatments? The needs of the military actually outweigh the needs of the individual. And that is a common practice in employment law. When you look at the disparity there, that you can't hold the military to the same employment standards because discrimination in the military is very much based upon your mental, physical, and aptitude tests. And if you can't meet all those standards, you have to across the board be fair with that treatment. Yeah, and in private employment, I mean, there are all kinds of things like the Americans with Disabilities Act. If you can modify the job so that somebody can do it under certain conditions, you have to do that as an employer. You know, Richard, a lot of people argue the military is just not in the business of doing that. To the point that Jesse made, Thomas Sparrow, who's with the Heritage Foundation, says this, the Pentagon's transgender, transgender policy is no different from its treatment of hundreds of other medically disqualifying conditions, such as bipolar disorder, asthma, or diabetes. These qualifications exist for two reasons, to ensure individuals are able to perform at the level expected and to prevent harm to higher risk individuals. Your uh, well, thanks for having me, Shannon. Number one, transgenderism isn't a disease and it's not an illness. These are people who wake up one morning, they might be born in the 
in the body of man, but they know they're woman and they transition to live that life. But I think the life. point is that they and need some kind of medical intervention or treatment that will have to but still But it, it really depends no. on what stage of the transition that they're in. So I think you're simplifying a very complex situation, number one. And number two, according to the, U the, U the UCLA Law Set Law School, there's about 15,000 mm -hmm. transgendered folks serving in our military. That makes the U.S. military the, no the largest employer in the United States for transgendered people. And the fact the Supreme Court made this ruling today without letting the lower courts have their say and finish mm -hmm. the policy of it shows that this is an ad a rejection of a whole group of Americans who want nothing more than to wake up, be happy, and have families. And beyond that, these, these particular 15,000 have went one step further. They want to protect our democracy. Mm -hmm. They want to protect our Constitution. And we're trying to stop them from doing that. We should be honoring these people instead of discriminating against them tonight. But again, a lot of these people are going nowhere. I mean, based on the policy so people understand it, this doesn't mean that anyone who has now presented publicly as transgender is getting kicked out of the military. So exactly. people know that's not what's happening. But two other reactions here. The Human Rights Campaign saying today's decision thrusts this administration's discriminatory agenda onto a military that clearly doesn't want it. DNC Chair Tom Perez goes to the next step. He says not only does this go against our values as Americans, it makes us less safe. Jesse. That That is absurd. First of all, to serve in the military is not a right. It's a privilege. Less than 1% of this country is serving and only 20% of our population is even qualified to serve. Just to serve, just to say you want to serve does not mean you should. First of all, the reason this was overturned is because the transgender gender population was going to get surgery and be able to transition while they were on active duty. Anybody who enlists now will have already had to been in that gender several years and already transitioned. So they're not discriminating. They're essentially saying you cannot come in and get off of the taxpayers and off of us and not be non-deployable. That is the key here. We're no, not is, an employment no, agency. This is where I'm, going I'm to have deployed. This is, excuse You've me, never and, deployed. Uh, you're I've absolutely been, right. But I've been I know, in the desert. Do you know somebody I've been who's transgendered? A, yes, I do, as a matter have of fact. Have you talked yes, to them about their transition? Many, times. many of them are, continue to work and Richard, live and operate you. during their transition, number one. And number two, the military spends $24 million dollars on erectile dysfunction and they only spent about because five that's million a medical condition actually. And, and those men still yes. serve don't they absolutely yes, it's a medical and condition the, and they that spend, is they're treatable. only spending five million dollars on transgendered medical and issues non deployable and they and must these be men replaced. and women and all I they think, want to do is protect our democracy and serve and, and the fact it, that you discriminate against them is ridiculous i think that's what it comes down to is the deployability issue regardless it's of what uh, what the issue is because a lot of people but, again thousands of people who are transgender will still be Shannon, able to serve i would agree with you normally but all three the former Ch Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman, the current Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman, and the incoming Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman also all said this is not a problem. And they're not alone. 56 other generals have come out, including okay. the head of every single military division, but and there, said this is not a problem. But there are other military le leaders who say they now this, this has affects none, the ability none of the ones to that are deploy. Running the, the military this is currently. a yes, deployability under the Obama front. administration. Nobody the Joint okay. Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> all right. We're not going to solve it tonight. Uh, but this eventually will back, end up probably back at the Supreme Court, and they're going to have to take Absolutely. it on the merits at some point, probably. So we'll see. Thank you both for coming. Coming in.